Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the Power Query SDK. So what is the Power Query SDK? If you're not familiar with the acronym, SDK stands for Software Development Kit. The Power Query SDK is an extension for Visual Studio. What is Visual Studio, I hear you ask? It's Microsoft's integrated development environment for creating computer programs, websites, and apps. If you're from an enterprise BI development background like I am, you're probably familiar with using it with SQL Server data source. Once again, Microsoft provide a community version of the software that you're able to download for free. Once you've installed the Visual Studio software, then to add the Power Query SDK extension, go to the extensions menu in the ribbon, select manage extensions, Search for Power Query in the search box. And select Download from this first option. You'll need to close Visual Studio and restart before the installation can take effect. Now my understanding of the Power Query SDK is that primarily it's for developers to create Power BI custom connectors. I don't think I've ever even used a custom connector, let alone written my own. So why might the Power Query SDK be useful? Well, it also lets you create Power Query files, and the interface for doing that is its very own M client, which allows you to write and test your own M as you go. Let's take a look. Firstly, in Visual Studio, you'll need to create a new project. To do that, go to File, New, Projects. And here you'll see a template for a blank PQ file. Select that, click next, give your project a name, click create. This launches a blank query screen where we can start to write our M query. To begin the query, we use the keyword let, then we define our steps. The first step I want to create is connecting to my data source. Which is a SQL database. And on the server is just my local installation. And the database is Contoso Retail DW. To return the step, use the keyword in, and then specify which step you want to return. Hit F5 to execute the query. And the first thing you'll happen is you'll get this error message. Don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong. It's just asking you for credentials to be able to connect to the database. So if I select Windows from here and set credential. Now when I hit F5, I'm good to go. So my connection to my database is working. The next step I want to define is which table I want to work with. I reference my previous step, then specify which schema, and which table within my schema, and I want to return the data. Make sure that I return this step. Hit F5. And there's my results. Effectively, what I'm doing now is live querying my database using M as a query language. Let's head back in and manipulate the data some more. So this table is a little bit too wide at the moment, so let's specify which columns I want.
So now I'm returning just the columns that I want to be displayed in this particular query. And then if I want to, I can start manipulating that further too. For example, this store name and store description, both returning the same piece of data. My entire data set is Contoso though, so that prefix seems a little bit redundant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the text from store name to get rid of that Contoso prefix, keeping the full description in store description, but just having a friendly name for that store name. So this step is saying to look in the previously defined select column step, look for the value Contoso Oop, with a space, replace it with a blank and do that in the store name column. Always make sure you change the step name reference at the end to get the most recent step name. F5 to execute. And as you can see, I've manipulated the store name column to no longer have that Contoso prefix. Where's the value though? So far, I haven't achieved anything that I couldn't do just in the drag and drop experience using Power BI Desktop. And this is where M as a language ends up being a bit neglected for me. Certainly, it's always been the weakest link in my Power BI chain. The trouble is, the drag and drop experience in Power BI Desktop is too good. Why bother trying to actually learn M when Desktop does everything you need? And my only real answer is that knowing this stuff a little bit more in depth makes you a better developer. It was only when I started to play around with the Power Query SDK that I felt I started to understand M and Power Query better. For example, I started to mess around with nesting steps. So for instance, if we return to the M query we've written so far, did you know that instead of doing this in four distinct steps, you can actually do it in one? Let me show you. I can replace this reference to select columns with this code here. I can replace this reference to table with this code here. And finally, I can replace this reference to source with, with, with this code here. I can then delete these steps. And just have this as one big long line of code. And if I hit F5 now, I end up with the same result. I can even take that piece of code. If I copy that, go to the Power Query Editor in Power BI Desktop and select a blank query. Go to the Advanced Editor and paste my code here. You see that I'm able to load that data in Power Query using only one applied step. Personally, most of the time, I still use the Power Query interface, whether that be in Power BI Desktop or the online experience using Dataflows. But I did find the SDK a really great tool when I needed to do something a bit more complex. And I do like to use it when I'm creating my own M functions. And I don't know if you spotted it, but all of the IntelliSense in the Power Query SDK works as you expect not the little gremlins that you get in the Power BI desktop interface. <laughs> now, I don't think that this SDK is actually gonna replace that existing Power Query UI, but as a means of exploring and experimenting with them in a bit more depth, I think it's a great addition to your tool belt. So let me know what you think. Have you used this before? If not, now that you do know about it, do you think you might use it in the future? I hope that's been useful. As always, if you've got any questions or feedback, please do head into that comment section below. If you have enjoyed the video, 
please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow along for more Power BI content, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.